Hello, my name is Martin. I didn't think much about God or Jesus for the first 25 years of my life. I went to church sometimes with my mother and I was sincere, but it hadn't really penetrated my heart. I went to school and university in uh, Southern Africa, in what's now Zimbabwe, where I studied law and had a good time, played rugby, lots of social drinking. And uh, when I left university, I got a job as a public prosecutor in the magistrate's courts and ultimately as a barrister in the uh, high court. Uh, and I was doing pretty well on my own, I thought which is what I was doing. It's actually quite a good definition of sin, uh, which is, I think, trying to live life without God. I, was, um, I met life with a real bump after that, however, when my wife Gail and I came to England at age 25, and um, uh, there was no money, or what money we had had been stopped, there was no job, we had no accommodation. We were sleeping on somebody's floor in London and suddenly life uh, looked very different through those eyes. I got a job temporarily with a supermarket cutting cheese and um, chopping up chickens while I was looking for a legal job which I got but I was earning per year what I had been earning per month uh, in the country I'd left. When I qualified uh, we we were expecting our first child. Our daughter Tanya was born and um, shortly after she came home from the uh, maternity unit we could sense that something was very wrong, which it was. They rushed her into hospital because she had been suffering from fits and had a very high temperature. And We pressed them to tell us what it was and they said they suspected meningitis but there was nothing they could do other than treat the symptoms try to keep the temperature down and put, give uh, antibiotics, which they didn't think would help. Um, I went home one night from the hospital and I was just desperate. And I dropped on my knees and I cried out to God. I said, God, if you're really there, if you exist, then you've got to help us. You're the only one who can. The best doctors and nurses and specialists in this country, in this city, can't help us. And the extraordinary thing is, the next day, we went to the hospital and uh, her temperature had come down, it was normal, the fits had stopped, the doctors couldn't explain it. It was just no coincidence and we knew it. Within a couple of days, Tanya came home and um, it just went strength, from strength to strength. And I was challenged. I prayed to this God. He'd answered my prayers beyond all expectation. And having wrestled with some of the, the facts that I had to work through, um, I eventually, within a few months, made my commitment to Jesus. I said, I'm not going to live my life uh, as a self-sufficient creature anymore. I've not done that well. Please come into my life and run it for me. Help me, I need your help, I'm so grateful. And God took me at my word, Jesus has been a wonderful guide ever since. He's helped me in my business practice. Uh, and, and, uh, in 1988, I started my own firm of solicitors and God led me to the right premises to find the right assistant and secretary and to find a safe to lock up the title deeds to keep the building societies happy. He brought, he brought a wonderful, steady supply of work, of clients, not too much, not too little, just right, all the way through my professional career. And he's been with me through the ups and downs, and there have been many, many of those, until I finally retired three years ago. Now, I still have that strong sense of justice that I've always had, and I'm trying to channel it uh, through IJM, which is International Justice Mission, and Stop the Traffic, T-R-A-F-F-I-K, which is a local organization, both committed to fighting 
modern slavery and to rescuing the victims of modern slavery. Both matters very much on God's heart. God is a wonderful God. He's never let me down and I know he never will.